Okay, the next video, the third video of chapter one is sampling methods and bias in sampling. And uh, this video will actually cover chapter 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5. Uh, we're going to start with some questions. So let's actually kind of read these questions first. Demographic information of U.S. residents. Um, mean high school GPA for students in Missouri. The number of hours a day people watching TV in Kirksville. How many hours a week Truman students spend studying the second language? Political preference in Kirksville. Hotel quality of service uh, survey. And it happens to be 90% 90% of the uh, uh, people are tourists and 10% of them are actually business traveler. So let's think about what is a good sample. So for all, remember that uh, in the uh, very first video, we talk about the difference between population and sample. Uh, if we can get uh, all the information about population, that would be great, but often it is too time consuming or too expensive. And sometimes it's not as accurate as you think it would be because there are some particular group of uh, the population can be missing. So we're gonna uh, typically play with the sample and make uh, inferences back to the generalization about the population. So we talked about that before. Then what would be a good sample? So, you know, in what kind of way that we can actually sample from the population? The key word of a good sample is representative. So you want your sample to be representative to the population, okay? So, sample need to be as similar to the population so that when we make an inference about the population thing based on the sample data, it actually makes sense. So representative is the actually magic word. Um, some bad cases, for example, when we're thinking about mean high school GPA for Truman in Missouri, say you choose conveniently because you're at Truman, you're just choosing a whole bunch of Truman students and ask their GPAs. Do you think that's a representative of a whole high school in the Missouri? Probably not, right? I heard that you guys had pretty good GPA in high school and work really hard. Um, other thing is, uh, say you're choosing uh, Truman or uh, in front of tractor supply to ask, what's your uh, political preference in Kirksville on well, one place or another? Um, and, you know, I'm not really trying to be uh, uh, promote stereotype or anything like that, but depending on where you uh, took a sample, and if you actually decided to take a sample and at Truman and Truman only, it probably is not going to be uh, representative in terms of political view in uh, Kirksville. Um, census is another thing that I guess number one as a demographic information of US uh, residents. Uh, this is one thing that uh, the American government is actually trying to collect all the information from the whole population. Uh, one of the criticism is that uh, we're, while we're trying to get all the information from every single one, we are missing a particular group of the American population, such as homeless people or really, really poor people who doesn't have a address or uh, somebody who live in America, but not really have a legal address or something like that. So uh, it's not really necessarily representative of the whole population. That's the whole point of it. Okay, so there are in big two type of sampling. One is convenient sampling which means you just conveniently sample it. Ask your friend, ask your mom, ask your uh, siblings, or ask your roommate. That's convenient. So you can get the sample like that way. Uh, the question is, uh, are they gonna be representative? Probably not likely. So then instead of convenient sampling, you kind of wanna do follow some uh, mathematical uh, procedure scientific method involved uh, uh, rather than human judgment so that uh, you can have uh, representative sampling. That's what the probability sampling. So the probability means there's some chance probability going on and you're gonna use those scientific methods. In probability sampling, there are 
uh, uh, several different uh, sampling there. The fir very first one is called simple random sampling. So the very basic idea of simple random sampling is that every individual in the population have exactly same chance to be choose in your sample. So everybody has the same chance. Um, the execute, the idea is actually simple, but the executing simple random sampling is actually not that easy because how you're going to make sure that everybody has exactly same chance to be picked up unless you're using like a random number. So for example, somehow uh, you have a whole list of let's say population is Truman students. Say you have a whole uh, banner number of everybody in the computer in Excel spreadsheet, and then you can actually do some random sampling using computer. Um, that's probably how you can do the random sampling, but you know, getting a, everybody's banner number is actually really a challenging thing, actually. I, I don't think you can actually get it. <laughs> so um, executing it is actually a little bit hard, but a basic idea is everybody has the same chance to be chosen. Um, since it is a little bit harder to do, execute the simple random sampling, um, people came up with slightly different ways of uh, sampling. So another one is called the systematic sampling. So for example, the case three that we talked about, so we are interested in the number of hours a day people watching TV in Kirksville. So this is a little bit of older example, but uh, I don't know whether you still remember those uh, um, yellow bug, white bug, no, the, the telephone number bug we used to have, um, like a book has everybody's name and then uh, phone number. So basic idea is you follow the system, you choose the very first random number. So in the, if you think about phone book, you know, you put first page open it and just randomly choose one number you know close your eyes and pick whatever that number is and then from there every tenth person every hundredth person every thousand person depending on how many sample you want you would sample those people and then uh, uh, you will get uh, those samples whatever the number that you want so this figure is representing, but if it's your random sample in the beginning, and then every third person, we are choosing it. That system we follow, so it's called systematic sampling. Cluster sampling is you are choosing a, a cluster. So for example, say uh, we are interested in true students spending, uh, studying the second language. Um, because it is hard to get a, a some random sample, you choose uh, one uh, dormitory, you are gonna choose Ryle Hall, and then you're gonna ask every single one in Ryle Hall. That seems a little more feasible than asking everybody. So it's a cluster. The question is, is that Ryle Hall students will be representative to the Truman population? Maybe, maybe not. So you need to actually think about that kind of um, uh, uh, problem, but uh, some cases cluster sampling will actually nicely work. And the cluster sampling means you are choosing a group of cluster of a, a population, and then you're gonna study everybody in your cluster. Another popular one is a stratified sampling. Um, it is doing random, simple random sampling within strata of interest. Strata is a group, different group of interest. So uh, for example, I think if there's a typo, but uh, hotel quality of service uh, survey, I think it was 90% of tourists and the 10% of business traveler. If you just simply do the simple random sampling, you can simply choose 100 people and then get your sample. But it's probably if you choose 100 people, it's really more likely that you're gonna have all the tourists, but really, really small number of business traveler. Um, in case that you are really interested in uh, business traveler's opinion as well, then you will just make sure that uh, you get some percentage of people from the tourist group and some percentage of the people from the other strata, which is the uh, business group people. 
Okay. Sometimes you would, I mean, depend on how you would be more interested. If you want to actually support more business people and, you know, you get a 50%, 50% of uh, uh, those uh, uh, strata, that's actually possible as well. So you actually depend on. And then obviously there's a multi-state sampling, which means you do uh, multiple different kinds of uh, sampling at the same time. So for example, you do the cluster sampling first and then stratified sampling or uh, stratify sampling first and then random sampling or something like that. So it's combining uh, those uh, sampling processes is called the multi-stage sampling. A little bit of bias. So when you are uh, collecting the sample, what kind of bias that we can think of? The bias is bad because it will results, uh, your results do not uh, actually reflect the population. So bias that causes uh, non-representativeness, that's what we're talking about. Um, sampling bias, some system systematic errors in choosing sample uh, favor one particular group over another. Uh, Non-response biases, that means certain group of uh, uh, people will tend not to respond it. Yeah, some uh, particular group of people will just ignore their email or something like that. Uh, so you probably have seen a lot of different uh, method that uh, encourage, they were trying to encourage you to participate in uh, study. You probably have seen a lot of uh, caller uh, people, uh, people call back again and again. Um, you probably have seen that there is a, some uh, award. That if you participate in this survey, uh, you will be one of the twenty uh, hundred dollar gift certificates from Amazon or something like that. You've seen that so encouraging um, those uh, participants to participate for the survey. Uh, I haven't even seen that some of them actually mailed the survey with the one dollar bill or something. So, you know, at least give them some guilt, give me some guilt to uh, participate in the survey as well. So there are some, you know, other methods that people do. Um, response survey. I mean, respond uh, biases. Uh, this is actually something that you really need to be careful and avoid it. Um, So, uh, I mean, the simple example will be how many hours do you study uh, every week? Then, you know, some people tend to probably uh, say not really the truth of, you know, their studying time, depending on who asks and how you, they ask and stuff. So, uh, on trained interviewer, survey administrator, leading question is actually probably uh, one of the uh, main cause of that order of question, vague questions. So uh, if you're asking, you know, those need to be all thought that uh, whether there will be uh, some kind of responding biases as well. Okay, so at this point, you will be, you are ready uh, to go ahead and do the my step lab again, and then do section 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5 homework. And this is the end of the chapter one uh, video.